Hey, kiddo. Did you write that? Mm -hmm. I love it. Good night, butterfly. place. We didn't find anything. I understand what you're going through, but finding your daughter's killer is my job. First, Adam and Tyler, thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. Really awesome movie, a really strong message, something that is, you know, it's just been going on really, um, you know, it's, it's hard to think that this thing happens all the time. And then, you know, you, you start to think about it and that's like, yeah, I mean, what, how, you know, you know, how, what would you do if you were put in that position, right? How, how, what, what, how would you do if you were put in the position of, of, you know, taking, taking, you know, justice into your hands, which is a difficult situation. So I think the first question has to be uh, for Tyler, uh, how did the story came about? Was it inspiration on something or, 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 or if you're just something that you wanted, you're passionate about? Uh, neither, really. It <laughs> came about out of necessity. Um, as I've been telling a lot of other people, we, uh, you know, I had managed to put together a small amount of investment um, that we were going to be putting into another project with another production company. That project ended up falling through. Um, so I was left holding a bag with no project and investors that still expected something for um for their money so i basically had to go back to the drawing board and write a brand new script with a third of the budget that we had um for this other project and um i just started with trying to figure out how to tell a story in you know a single location with a handful of characters basically three people in a room um and this is what came out of it um uh, adam when you saw the script Again, I was as, how as I was explaining about the story. What was your first reaction? How did you react to this this difficult situation that we, even though we don't talk about it, we clearly see it all the time. Um, I was sort of taken by the the humanity of it that there wasn't a, a a moral stance or ethical stance. It was a sort of human stance that here is an individual who is placed in an impossible situation and does what he needs to do for him. Um, and that, you know, Tyler didn't uh, insert some sort of like uh, uh, message or, or statement about life that it was really just trying to look at this environment or this, this situation in this environment and saying, what do we do or what would you do if um, and letting the chips fall where they where they fall. Uh, I thought that that was refreshing. I thought that uh, the fact that it doesn't have a nice, neat, happy ending that you know you're left looking at people going, okay, now what? What's mm -hmm. going to happen? Uh, you know, life life keeps going, and now we're in a weird new normal. <laughs> so go. Um, I just it just was wonderful. And um, also, I was, you know, I was, it was a job that was coming around the same way all other jobs do. And I was going to do pretty much anything that comes my way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's cute. That's cool. Fun, fun answers there. Tyler, uh, you know, the story is so, you know, difficult in, in, it, in the sense of just, of, of what we're trying to, you know, put out there. What was what you consider so diff, what you consider difficult about the whole pre-filming process uh, with with everything that's going on? It's all difficult. I mean, there's not a single step of this that's easy. You know, you. I mean, luckily it all came together, and I like to think that maybe half of it was luck and half of it was just planning ahead. Um, you know, once you have a script, you get it off the ground, you go into pre-production. 
And, um, you know, you're working with very limited resources, so you have to be very economical about how you solve problems, how you actually, you know, you've got 17 shooting days to get this whole thing done. Um, and you're basically out there guerrilla grocery shopping so that I can, you know, at the end of it, get into the kitchen and cook the meal. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, you just have to really try to plan for the best and um, hope for the, no, hope for it's the best. Plan and plan for the for worst, the, yeah, it's the other way around. The other way around, the yeah, worst, the other way around the doesn't make sense. If you plan for the best, and hope for the worst. That's, 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 that's life, that's life. That's how you deal with that life. Comes crashing down. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> we, all, we, oh, all hope, we, we all for the best. Yeah. Oh, we've been at this a while. We're getting a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Adam, um, obviously, I don't know if you, the two of you are, are you know, fathers, but I, you know, I want, and I want to put you in this position, you know, and, and Taylor, I don't want you to jump in also. How would you guys react to, to if something like this happened? You know, it's difficult. And, and under, we have to understand how justice works. Sometimes justice doesn't pan out for every, everyone. And it's again, like I said, that's the one thing that I that I thought of when I finished watching Namuya. And you mentioned it, Adam. We don't get that the ending that we, we we expected, but it's just something that happens all the time, and we don't talk about it. So you know, Tyler and Adam, how would you, you know, difficult situation react to it? Uh, you know, I would love to be able to give you like the the great answer, like oh, I I know me, I would do X. Uh, I have two kids. Um, that are, uh, you know, the most important things in my life. Everything I do mm -hmm. is for them. Um, but I don't know how I would respond. I don't know. Um, and, and I think that that's me being truly honest with myself. Be, to, to say one way or the other is, is, is speculation. Uh, I do know that however I initially react or however it longs to get through whatever that first reaction is, I would go for blood. Eventually, um, whether that would be through a legal system or not, I don't know. But um, you know, you can't. You know, and this was something that I had to wrestle with while I was going through the processes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, how, what, what, what if, and what would I do in this situation? Uh, so I don't, I don't have a great answer. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I hope well, to never the, I... ever have to be put in that situation. Let's put that, yeah. Tyler. At the start of the movie, he's his daughter's already dead. So there's no there's no help. There's no saving her. She's already gone. So mm -hmm. it, it really ends up being about what he needs to do to quell whatever emotional thing is going on inside of him. I'm currently writing this new script now. And as an element of it, um, I've had to kind of do some research on um on burglaries um that's just an element of of this new story that i'm working on but in doing that research i found that you know 11 percent of burglaries in the la area are solved it's lower than the natural average which is 13 percent and of those 11 percent 100 percent of that 11 percent is basically people who are caught in the act or somehow the goods that were stolen are recovered and linked back to them or found in their possession or whatnot. Um, so basically the point that I'm trying to make with that is that we all hope that there's some type of help out there when something ha bad happens, but the truth is there isn't. Um, so, you know, whatever help it is that you're hoping for really, you know, I'm not, up here promoting taking the law into your hands in any way but in essence the the hope the help that you're hoping for is not going to come yeah life life is not a network television you know cop drama yeah i think tyler you did a really good, good awesome job at you know at, at you know presenting this difficult situation uh, again something that i'm doing that's throughout that's something that we see all the time we don't talk about it it's difficult, obviously. Um, and I want to talk a little about the casting. How did the girl, is the girls, the one obviously spoiler, the one we see at the, uh, at the end of the of the, the movie, and then obviously Adam's uh, daughter, how did the girls react to their situation? Because it's difficult what we're putting them to. 
Tyler. Um, Addison was, you know, they were both troopers. They were both great, both, you know, Addison and, and Scarlett. And I think they were too young to really understand how difficult the situation actually was. Um, you know, so like sometimes, you know, both of the girls ended up in one particular instance having to be bound and gagged and placed in a, you know, dark little cubby or whatever. And they just, they, they were having a blast. They, it was, it was hard, you know, for me to sit there and watch it, but they were, you know, it was all just fun for them. It was all make-believe for them. So, you know, they were, it's, it's funny because like I said, they don't really, quite grasp the the gravity of the situation for them they're just on a movie having a good time but uh you know working with them was 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 pretty great um hey you, you just you know i i'm, I'm gonna want to jump into this question because you know you're piggybacking what you just said um so as a serious subject obviously but what what was the mindset in set uh obviously with the girls and everything's going around can at least walk us through maybe a day of something interesting that happened that you want people to, you know, to stay, you know, or, so, you know to, to stand out from it. So Tyler, you first. Um, if you're asking about an interesting circumstance, probably the most interesting circumstances, there was a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a photograph that Adam's character eventually finds of his, of his daughter, the little girl, Addison Ross, bound and gagged. And so we had to actually take those photographs. Um, and after production wrapped, um, still don't know who, but somebody uh, on the production side of things decided it would be a good idea to just throw those photos in the trash. Well, the Salisbury police found them and these photos ended up circulating across every national law enforcement database and the FBI was investigating and I was back here cutting the movie together and I eventually just got a call. They had kind of figured out what had happened because they were able to track the photos to a kiosk that they had printed out at. They found Addison on IMDb. Um, you know, they knew that there had been this production in town shooting, you know, a murder movie. Um, but that was pretty jarring was to get a call from, you know, law enforcement about like, them having spent two weeks investigating the abduction of uh, your little actress. <laughs> I, we're yeah. laughing now, but my 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 hair. Yeah. Just, just, oh, oh, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know how you're gonna top that, Troy. <laughs> I can't. Um, actually, that was. If, if I had gone first, I probably would have brought that up. Um, uh, I think that, you know, that final. Uh, that final were one of the final scenes of the movie not to you know no spoilers here but there at least for me the the sort of uh performance uh uh emotional um leveling that that happened uh, it may be the wrong word but uh, it's the only one i can think of um was something i'm most most proud of in the movie. I thought that it was, you know, just a beautiful culmination of, of everything that was happening and, and coming to this place where, you know, Ryan finally has a catharsis. Uh, and I thought that it wasn't, it was just a moment where it could have easily been overdone. It could have easily uh, gone off the rails and it didn't. And we really only had one shot at it. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pressure, but to be able to just put that pressure away and have that moment uh, was nice. Um, the other one was the fact that the van that we were using didn't fit in the garage that it needed to be in. So they had to, you know, deflate the tires and put all of the crew in it and just weigh it all the way down and then sort of eek it in. To the... <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Like that, that are just, you know, that's the fun stories you get to tell after the fact. <laughs> I, I I tend to ask those questions because I, those are, the, well, Tyler just surprised me. I still hire my my hairdryer just because of the the story. But but I tend to ask those questions because I I want to get those you know fun sort of answers. Um, and I say Tyler Tyler with that with that with that with that you just told you just sold the the movie that people are gonna watch it just <laughs> just because of it. Trust me, just 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 you put it you just put it in some other level there. So maybe one fun question, open question for the two of you. Again, this has been a really awesome interview. Um. What did you expect people to take away from it when they see the movie, when, when they see the whole story? I want to go with Tyler first. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not making movies trying to put out big messages. I just hope people enjoy it as a piece of entertainment. I hope it keeps them on the edge of their seat. Um, it'd be great if it opens up some dialogue and you know allows for people to have some discussions like the ones that we're having now. But really, I'm just I'm just trying to make a movie that I, uh, hopefully people will enjoy and tune in and watch. And uh, you know, that's it. Really, that's my that's my modus operandi here. Adam, <laughs> um, you know, I think that knowing that you know life life doesn't end up. Uh, it, this isn't taken. We don't all have special skills that we can then use to, you know, get our child back or, or revenge our child. Um, you know, and that there's, it's like a slice of sort of the, the worst possible day in someone's life or worst experience in somebody's life. Um, but that there, that even in that, you won't get back what you had, but you need to find a way to move on. Uh, and how you choose to move on is up to you. Now, we don't point the audience in any one direction, but I think that you know an audience who watches this movie can can sort of fill in those blanks and say, okay, no matter how bad anything is, there's a next step afterwards. Mm -hmm. Where do we go? I think, um, Tyler, that the movie is going to be a conversation starter. That's something that I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that that's what I saw when, you know, the first thing that I still uh, was thinking when I finished watching the movie. So again, I want to congratulate the two of you for a really good movie, a really awesome story. You know, awesome, a story that you know people you know, will resonate with it. Just be, uh, it doesn't matter how difficult it is; it's just going to resonate because of the story itself. So I want to congratulate the two of you on a really uh, awesome story, a really awesome movie. And and again, thank you for your time and for the the space. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us.